Today we're breaking down exactly how I use spaced repetition to do well in my exams. This is a revision technique that is heavily backed up by science and is proven to be one of the most powerful ways to learn anything. But the issue with spaced repetition is that very few people actually know how to apply it realistically. People know about it, but no one ever sticks to it because using it always seems like it's too overwhelming, like it's too much of a commitment. So in this video, I'll be telling you about the PAR framework, P-A-R, that's pace, accelerate, and race. I use this three-part framework to implement spaced repetition in a very practical and manageable way during first term time and then exam season. Let's get straight into it. In a nutshell, space repetition, as the name suggests, is basically spacing out the studying you're doing over a period of time, and then reviewing it using active recall in particular intervals. The reason we need to do this is because our brain is phenomenal at filtering out the unnecessary information that we throw at it on a daily basis. In fact, we forget over 50% of the information we learn within an hour of learning it, and over 70% of it is gone within 24 hours. All of us experience this. You revise the topic one day, and then the next day you're like, huh? What did I, what was that? What did I do? What did I eat that day? Ebenhaus named this idea the forgetting curve. Over time, you forget things at an exponential rate. And the only way we can actually remember the things we learn is by interrupting that curve. This means testing yourself or revising that topic just as you're about to forget it. For example, the first time you study topic one of molecular biology, you're gonna forget it very quickly. But then if you study it three days later, it'll stick a bit longer. 10 days later, a bit longer. A month later, even longer until it's part of your long-term memory. You get the gist is studying things in these expanding intervals of time that is best for our learning and retention. But here comes the problem that everyone who tries out space repetition will encounter. It's too hard to do space repetition for everything that you need to study for your exams. Imagine having to repeat the revision of every topic, every lecture you're doing four times for every subject whilst also learning new things in class, having assignments, having exams, and still trying to have a balanced life. It's overwhelming, and a lot of people, including me, we implement it for the first two weeks, but we fail to keep up because it just isn't realistic. It's too hard to balance the new stuff you're learning every day with the old stuff that you have to review. At first it's all right, because it's like reviewing one or two old things. You think, I'll repeat this on day one, day three, day 10, day 30, I'll have it really spaced out, and it'll work out. But no, it doesn't work like this, because now if you think about it, the half Halfway through week two, you're gonna have to start reviewing like four old things on the same day, plus process and make questions for all the new stuff you're learning in class, and you have a test on Friday. And that's just a lot of work. Adding all those review sessions onto your week is too much for someone like me who doesn't want to spend hours and hours in the library every day. And so like most people, I was kind of demotivated by the excessive workload that it would take to keep space repetition up throughout the term. But then in the next exams, I experimented with space repetition again, and this time I did it a lot smarter and came up with a step-by-step -step framework that was manageable enough for me to actually stick to it during term time and then in exam season. Pace your space repetition throughout the term, accelerate your learning by incorporating it within the revision sessions that you do in the week. And finally, race. Racing towards the final exams in the last few weeks when you really have to ramp up the amount of active recall sessions you're doing and when you have to properly space that out. If you want to use space repetition during the term in a sustainable way and have it not take up your entire week, you have to be tactical about it. So throughout the term, instead of applying space repetition to everything I needed to know for the exams, all I did was that I applied it to the most high yield and important topics, the 20% that would give me 80% of the results. Instead of thinking, let's repeat every topic we learn on day one, on day three, day 10, and day 30, all you'll need to do during the term is focus on the hardest and most commonly assessed topics in the exam. This includes the stuff you find challenging and it's all the stuff that comes up frequently in past papers. By only applying spaced repetition to the most important topics instead of everything, all we now need to do is have a few extra review sessions per week, which didn't take that much time at all, and I got all the benefits of revising those important topics in spaced intervals. By doing this, you're focusing on the right things and everything is a lot more manageable when you only have to do that 20% high yield content. But how do we actually identify what this 20% of high yield topics are? What are the topics that we should intentionally be applying space repetition to during that term? For me, genuinely, the first thing I did was that I went through three to five past papers right at the start. You immediately get a gist of the important topics that come up more frequently and the stuff that you need to give more attention to. The second thing I did was that I created an I don't know list. What it is, is that it's a list of all the topics, the calculations, the concepts that I don't know or that I don't understand properly. It's basically a list of all the weak topics 
topics I had for each subject. I combined this I don't know list with the commonly assessed topics that I noticed in the past papers and that is what I applied spaced repetition to during that term. By doing the small thing of identifying what's high yield and what's not, you avoid wasting so much time from the get-go. You actually end up using spaced repetition in the places where it matters most without wasting hours and hours of time studying every day. As for the rest of the content, I didn't just want to leave it till a few weeks before the exams. So throughout the term, whenever I learned anything new, I convert that content into active recall questions so that I could practice and test myself on them at a later point. I've talked about how I do this step by step in this video right here and I really suggest you check it out because it perfectly complements the PAR framework. The second part of the PAR framework is Accelerate. Accelerate your learning, your studying, and the rate of your attention by incorporating spaced repetition within your day-to-day -day revision. By using spaced repetition in even two or three of the study sessions you have per week, because let's face it, you aren't gonna remember to do this every time. By doing this in even two or three of them, the level of your learning and how fast you do it will just skyrocket. In university, I found that even spacing the stuff I'm learning in the same day has the potential to boost my marks. And practically, this involved two main things for me. The first was doing mini reviews or active recall sessions after a few hours of learning a topic. So let's say I'm planning to do three topics that day. Instead of studying and making questions for topic one and then straight away practicing those questions, what I do is that I give a break between the studying of it and the practicing of it. That way, after studying topic one, I'm now letting the information marinate and I'm allowing myself to forget it. So when I come back in a few hours to review it and practice the stuff I learned in topic one, my brain is gonna have to work harder to retrieve that knowledge. And if it has to work harder, then it'll stick in my head for a longer period of time. By doing the studying and taking a break before you answer like 15 to 30 minutes of practice questions, you're spacing out the learning within these revision sessions and it really does help improve your long-term understanding. The second thing I do is a bit of a lazier version for the mini reviews. You just do 30 to 40 minute end of day reviews. You literally just fly through all the main topics and the main questions that you struggled with that day. You write down what you didn't remember and then you go chill. Do this at the end of the day or even the start of the next day, but make sure to answer questions, to practice, to maybe make a mind map. Even ask yourself a simple question on the bus home. What did I learn today? This daily space repetition was probably the most helpful thing I did in my preparation for the exams. It really accelerates in my learning and it was probably very good from my long-term understanding of the topics anyways. One last real life tip I'd like to give is to not get stuck on learning something perfectly. We've all been there. We spent hours trying to learn something and now we don't want to leave it because we have to know this properly before we can move on. Do not do this. If you have this perfectionist tendency like I did, try and get rid of it. You have to. You have to move forward very quickly when you're studying a lot of content. Yes, try and understand it, but do not get stuck on it. I do this so much, my friends do it, and it is such a huge time waster. The final part of the framework is race, kind of like a race towards the exams. These are usually the last four weeks before the exams when the new content stops coming in and it's when I properly ramp up the studying I'm doing and devote a lot more time to the active recall sessions and the topics I wanted to implement spaced repetition on. This is when I get really serious with the spaced repetition and I apply it to all the topics that I don't know and that I didn't cover previously and I stick to it. But before I jump into this exam revision mode, regardless of what I've done in the previous term, whether it was nothing or it was something decent, I sit down and clearly evaluate how well I know the big topics each subject. I color code those topics red, orange, yellow, green, and this way, even if I've done nothing that term, I now know and have a good overview of exactly what I need to do in the next four weeks. And since so far in the term I've only applied spaced repetition to the high yield stuff, this is the time when I'll pick up the medium important topics and go over the high yield stuff again. I'll tackle as much as I can and as strictly as possible. Practical tips for what you need to do during this time is first create a revision timetable where you space out the learning of all the topics that you need to know and prioritize them based on how well you know them and how important they are. And that's what I did. Whatever the revision timetable actually looks like is just four weeks. So organize the important topics that you need to know in those expanding intervals. Obviously, I still try to maintain a bit of a balance during this time, but I'd skew my time a bit more towards exam prep. I'd stick to the revision session, the active recall, and I'd do it all in space intervals very strictly. If you're doing a topic on day one, then make sure you do review sessions or those active recall questions for that one topic at the end of the day, in between the day, or even the next day. Then repeat that on day three or four, then repeat that again on day 10, and then on day 30. Obviously the spread of the days doesn't really matter as much. There's, there's no scientific literature that proves that, oh, doing it on day one and day three, and then day 10 is the best way. No, just make sure it's spaced out and the intervals between each revision sessions for that one topic is expanding. And lastly, I really use those active recall sessions, the mini review 
reviews and the end of day reviews that we discussed in Accelerate in your everyday revision. Because I remember those actually helping me so much in those last four weeks. And yeah, that is the PAR framework that I use to practically apply spaced repetition to do well in my exams. If you'd like to learn about the step-by-step -step active recall method that I use to convert all the content I need to know from my exams into good quality questions, then check this video out. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, subscribe for more content in the future. And as always, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.